So let's talk about class guidelines today. Um, since with this way of doing the class, uh, there is much mutual aid uh, between students, the atmosphere in the classroom between students is very important. It's critical for the success. Um, so we need an explicit soft skills training. Let's say um, you are a math, te a math teacher would say me um, for having better academic results in, my, in mathematics, uh, my students should spend more time doing mathematics, which is quite obvious. Uh, I would reply, not always true. If you take some time, so let's say that in the year you do mathematics, Um, maybe if you take off that part, not doing mathematics, for example, let's say you have 100 hours uh, you know, on mathematics and you take off 20, let, let's take a big number, 20 hours, and instead of doing mathematics, you do soft skills. Explicit soft skills, activities, and learning. I would not be surprised, I would even bet that by doing so, you have greater academic results in mathematics. So, doing less mathematics would lead to more better mathematic results in the grade books of the students. So, um, for, for doing soft skills, uh, we, we base ourselves mostly on positive discipline. Positive discipline is a method which is used in families and classrooms um, and which is developed for, phew, I would say, a hundred years, but at least since the 19th century. Um, it's well known, well translated, um, it's not that difficult to find training. So we include elements of positive discipline of that method um, into our class transformation uh, methodology. So one aspect of positive discipline is kind and firm. Positive discipline. So to be kind and firm. And let, let's talk about the kindness a little bit. For the teacher, I am to have a good relationship and to have better mathematic uh, academic results, you need to convince your pupils, your students, that you care about them. To have a good relationship with them and to, to make them be more focused and do a better work in mathematics. So, I'm convinced that most teachers care about the students, but I don't think that students are aware of that. If you ask a student, tell me, who are your teachers? Uh, maybe you have 10 teachers, and tell me who is caring about you, who, who, who feels cares about kids, about uh, teenagers, and the, the student will say, okay, this one cares, I, I'm convinced, but this one probably not, this one not, this one well, and so on. So, um, it's important to be explicit uh, about the fact that you care um, about your students. And between students, also the same. How many times I've seen students insulting each other um, or jostling uh, as soon as the teacher looks away. Um, but you may ask them, yeah, but it's for fun. And they say it's for fun. Um, and maybe they are convinced it's for fun. Um, but, and, and I'm convinced there will no real bad intention most of the time. But it's not what they show. And so it's important to show uh, and to be very explicit about um, being caring and kind, and this can be um, 
this can be explained as you explain mathematics and this should be exemplified and uh, enforced by the teacher. So one way to do that, to, to do that are the classroom guidelines. It's a document, uh, it's a paper, could be a poster that you display on the wall. Um, and you decide at the beginning of the year with the students what will be these guidelines. Um, typically, you organize a brainstorm within the class with the, with the students to decide on them, starting with, with the following question. Um, I'm going to read it. I need your help. I need the help of everyone to create guidelines for behavior in our classroom that are respectful and encouraging for everyone. Let's brainstorm for ideas. And you brainstorm for ideas for 10 minutes. And you don't need much more. And always the same words will come, typically respect, and, and maybe something less obvious, just, oh, to me, I, I need to work in a clean environment. So cleanless um, will be one of the proposed words. Uh, another will say, I need a teacher who smiles. Um, I need, um, I need a structure where things are well organized and, and, and so on. Okay, so many students will propose, will propose um, solutions and probably you can group some of the solutions because they are very similar, they are just synonyms. So you, you, you manage the meeting, um, you conduct the meeting and then after 10 minutes, maybe 20, uh, if you if it work, works well, you ask students to vote. And they vote on each guidelines on each group. Um, and so on. And then at the end of the vote, you have your guidelines. Number one, two, three, four, maybe four to five, maybe six, but no more than six guidelines. Um, and probably you will find the word respect in them is very usual. Uh, you can look on, on the web for which kind of guidelines you typically come and you could propose them up front to the student, but it would not work as well. So a critical aspect of this is that these guidelines have been decided by students. Maybe you could have guessed their choice and the headmaster would would have provided a list of guidelines, the same for all classrooms, for all the schools. Um, the students would, would agree with the guidelines, but it's not the same. So a critical part of this process, of these guidelines, is that they have been created by the students, or at least the students have the feeling they have created these guidelines. Um, and I'm, I'm convinced you will have differences between guidelines from one class to the other. So they are really co-constructor of the guidelines. Okay. So guidelines are kind of rules, but not detailed rules. It's very general broad rules um, that you can refer later when you have a problem in the club. Okay. Is that respectful? Look, rule num uh, guideline number one. Uh, what you are both doing is that in line with the rule number one that we, we, we decided together. Um, it's much easier for the teacher to refer to these guideline numbers afterwards when you have the difficulty of a real-time problem. So, after that, every student needs to sign um, and teacher um, of the class of, of that class need to sign the guidelines. You you have a large space for signature um, at the bottom of the guidelines. You have one set of guidelines for every pack of students for every class. Um, if you have multiple teachers for a class, not every teacher will make guidelines for that class. Okay, um, so other teachers should agree with the list and, and, and cope with it and enforce it in, in, in the classroom. 
during the year. Okay. Um, so the the key point is when the students are contributing to make these guidelines, first they better understand it. And second, uh, they are more committed to apply it to themselves and also to enforce it, to help other students to say, for example, one student could say to another, oh, it's not um, in line with guideline three. I, I ask you to change or I'd like you to, to, to change what you are doing or saying. Um, and maybe it will be enough. Maybe the teacher will have to um, to say the same, um, but with some training, with some time, um, the, the community of students will be more uh, will be more kind and firm at the same time with each other, and that investment will pay because we spend more time doing uh, mathematics than discipline. Thank you. That's it for today.